Good morning. You're listening to FloridaDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Wynn Everhart, the incoming president and CEO of Tarket North America. Wynn, how you doing? Good today. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for letting me help introduce you to the business. You just stepped into this role about a month, and I think the last month you've been traveling around, meeting the team, and looking at all the assets that you're now in charge of, right? I had. I was planes, trains, and automobiles. I've had the opportunity now in week five to get out and visit a lot of our plants and operations, meet a lot of our teams, spend time with our sales leaders, as well as a lot of our customers throughout the East Coast. And then I have plans to, of course, get out and visit the Central and West and some of our other operations in Canada and Mexico and other places that I still haven't gotten to yet, but yeah, it's been a busy five weeks. Excited to be here. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me just take the listeners through your background and then whatever I get wrong, you can correct. You stepping in this role from three years at Whirlpool and you served as the senior vice president of U.S. commercial and business operations. And that included the brand strategy and product marketing and supply chain. And interestingly enough, your boss at Whirlpool was Joe Leotine. Would, he had a PepsiCo background. I think that's interesting because you spent 20 years at Coca-Cola, and the last role you had at Coca-Cola was where you led their Philippines business. And you have a mechanical engineering degree from Georgia Tech. There's a lot of people listening to this. They're going to love that because many of the great strong leaders in the flooring business share that school. And then you also have an MBA from Harvard. Did I get that right? That is correct. It does show you that someone from Pepsi and someone from from Coca-Cola can get along, even though we have very different backgrounds. And of course, I spoke a lot slower for him just to make sure he could understand what I was saying coming from Pepsi. (laughs) Well, I think Whirlpool must think that the sugar water business is a good background for their executives. But uh, a little bit more on you, if you don't mind. You've got a family with three kids, and I think that's probably why you're still living in St. Joseph, Michigan, and you're in your mid-40s. Did I get that right? Yep. Three kids, 13, 10, and 8, two boys and a girl, and a wife of 15 years. And currently, we live in southwest Michigan, St. Joseph, Michigan, and they're uh, planning to relocate to the great city of Atlanta, Georgia. Here's one I'm loving to share with our listeners. You grew up in Bristol, Virginia. I grew up in Bristol, Tennessee, and you were a big athlete. I think you were a wrestler, right? Correct. I lived in Bristol, Virginia all my life. My family business, my grandfather started a textile plant. Uh, it was on the Bristol, Tennessee side. So the crosstown rivals were Tennessee High, and I, I went to Virginia High and lived there all my life. Loved playing all sports, but probably excelled the most in wrestling. You're on the reporting structure, you're the leader of Tarket North America. And recently, Tarket named someone to focus on the sports business, the field turf business. That doesn't come up through you, does it? Correct. Typically, the legacy and the history of even Tarket North America and Tarket Sports was one that they were separate businesses, separate operations, separate teams, you name it. Thanks mm-hmm. to the great leadership by Eric Geyer, my predecessor, as well as the predecessor in sports, he had grown up in the sports business. And when Tarket North America was looking for a leader to come in, and they brought Eric in, and so he was able to manage both sports and Tarquette North America. But now the decision is to kind of bring it back to their original states of, you know, two operating businesses and we operate separately. And, you know, of course we collaborate where we need to, but at the same time, very different operations, very different customer base, very different even brands and and categories as well. Okay. And you report to the Tarquette global leader who is Fabrice Bartholomew. Tell us a little bit about your team structure. I, I know Rusty, is your head of sales. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yep. Rusty's the head of sales, been in the flooring industry for many, many years, and you know, someone that we rely on and lean on to really help guide us you know, from all things sales. Has a very good and established team who I've been able to meet throughout the last several weeks. We have Tracy Scott, who leads our operations of the business. So he has most of all the plants and procurement, R&D, kind of all the technical aspects and functions relative to the operations outside to the business, but has learned it and spent what we call it the last three plus years in the business as well. From a supply chain logistics, we have Stefan Kutulian, probably butchered his last name if he's listening, but Stefan runs all of our supply chain logistics 
SNOP, you name it, kind of distribution, shipping, transportation type functions for, for the team. There's Paul Young, another veteran to the industry. It came from Shaw Industry. Yeah. Definitely. It came from Shaw. Been in the industry for many years, but has you know, our segment, our product, our sustainability, and our innovation roadmap. And again, just the wealth of knowledge and understand the business and the makeup of it. Head of brand marketing and kind of strategy for that side is Serena Serraro. Again, I butchered probably the last name, but she's also an outside of the business that has a great long story history of building brands, especially internationally. Coming to the States now and, and it's spent a lot of time in all of the different markets. When you think about some of our independent businesses, you know, there's Jason Surratt, again, another long story industry member. He leads our Tarquette home business or our residential and in the home business, another good Georgia Tech grad, and uh, yeah. proud to have another Yellow Jacket. But welcome to the team. There's Kim Droughts, who's also runs our hospitality business, so independent business right. on our that we operate and manage. Again, another veteran in the industry, knows carpet, knows a lot of what the ins and outs of the business. Louise Yanchi, she's the head of HR, does a great job. Again, new to the business, but has been spent a lot of time on the industrial side. Scott Taller runs our IT and chief information side of the business. Again, new to the business, or relatively new, but uh, really excited about his presence. And then there's Marie France Nantil, who's our chief legal officer. Frederick Valiant, who is our chief financial officer. So he's the one that pulls all the numbers for, for us together and makes sure all the bills get paid on time. But excited about the team, excited about the experience, both internally and externally, and, and all they bring to the table as well. Well, let me just tell you, we welcome you to this business. I don't know if you've heard or not, but people who enter this business usually don't leave. So this is going to be your career <laughs> focus for the rest of your life. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I've heard it as a life sentence. I've heard it as a black hole. Uh, I heard it's a family that, you know, comes to stay for the weekend, but stays for the eternity. You, you name it. But yeah, that's right. I've heard it described in many ways. And so far in my first five weeks, I'm just really excited. I can't say enough good things about you know the Harquette team and how welcoming they've been and how just the wealth of knowledge, but even you know those in the industry, you know, our customers, our suppliers, you name it, they've just been you know, just really welcoming and just for sure, just the wealth of knowledge and someone for sure that I'll be leaning on to learn from down the road as well. You have a lot of legacy brands in Johnsonite and Power Bonds and Tiva. I'm not going to name them all, but you know, there's a, a lot of brands for you to choose from. So I'd be curious as you look into that and what you guys decide to do around that. I went on one last question. I'm just curious since we both grew up in the same town. How did you get rid of that East Tennessee dialect? Uh, everyone always asks me that. And I, I tell them I, I lived all my life in Bristol, you know, went to Georgia Tech, spent a lot of time in Atlanta, a lot of time in t Dallas, and then also overseas for several years. And I don't know. I think it's being around different cultures and different people. But it is funny. I do tell people, though, anytime you go back to Bristol or back to my hometown, it's where my name, Wynn, becomes two syllables and it becomes Wien, where it gets yeah. drug out a little bit. But no, love the area. love, you know, I can't say enough good things about growing up in Bristol and that part of the world. Really sad to see what's happened with the hurricane. But for sure, it's God's country, and for sure, it's always and will continue to be a, a special place in my heart. Well, they talk funny up in Boston, so it's probably where they shook it out of you. But anyways, it's great to uh, spend time <laughs> with you. I couldn't have been talking to Wynn Everhart, the new president and CEO of Tarket North America, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLA.net.